California microbiologist Dr. Curry Mullis was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1993 for his development of one of the most widely used current techniques in molecular biology today, the PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This revolutionary technique allows scientists to take a sample containing a very minute amount of DNA and replicate that DNA sequence until there are many copies. One of the first applications of The people that are AIDS researchers now are getting neurotic if you ask them any questions. There was a time when I first started asking questions. So I, all I wanted was, where are the papers? Just tell me the papers that you read that convinced you that HIV was the cause of AIDS because I need to reference those papers in some of those. I was working on a test for HIV with PCR, and I needed to write a little report to the NIH to say, here's the progress we've made. And the first line of it was, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. And I thought that was true. This is before I got into, involved. And I said, what's the reference for that quote? And I looked for it for about two or three years, and I never could find it. And by the end of two years, I'd ask everybody at every meeting that I'd gone to that talked about AIDS. I'd ask, you know, every, I'd look through every computer database. There is no reference. There is nobody who should get credit for that statement. Now, that's a pretty weird situation in science where getting credit for a discovery is the most important thing in your life as a scientist. It's silly to hear people saying, you don't believe that HIV causes AIDS? You don't believe that? I mean, it's just a word, but it's a very, very important distinction, I think, that, that, that you know, that's why, it, and it, it's become a very emotional kind of thing, because people actually, they get personally committed to what really is a body of evidence that can be analyzed, you know, by lots of people, and, and at this point, there's so much of it out there, Nobody can really analyze it, all of it, but nobody can write a review of it that says HIV causes AIDS because of this. You know, if a postdoc were to write a review of their literature that showed without much doubt that HIV was the cause of AIDS, that guy would be famous. Now, there's uh, 100,000 guys out there who had the opportunity. It's 10 years has passed. We've been waiting for this star postdoctoral fella to distinguish himself forever and get a lifelong grant from Tony Fauci, but he hasn't shown up. No one has bothered to write a definitive review. Any journal would take it. That right there proves that HIV does not go safe. Just because Bob Gallo gets up, takes his sunglasses off and says, gentlemen, you discovered the cause of AIDS. That's all we have. New York Times article, CDC report, that's all we have. Because of the different criteria that apply in different countries, you can be considered, you can test HIV positive in one country and be given an AIDS diagnosis as a result of that, whereas in another country you won't test HIV positive and you won't be given an, an AIDS diagnosis. It's ludicrous that you can be positive in one country and not positive in another. Theoretically, I could be diagnosed with AIDS in the United States, but if I take three steps to my right, I wouldn't be diagnosed with AIDS, or I would lose my AIDS diagnosis when I crossed the border. In 1992, I was encouraged by a doctor to take what's called an HIV test as a matter of social responsibility. And I was shocked and devastated and horrified when the results came back positive. It was one of those moments that everyone fears their whole life. A week later, I take the same test to an AIDS specialist. He looks and says, this isn't a positive test. I don't know what this test means. Since a false positive looks like a true positive, how can you ever distinguish whether it's truly a positive or a negative? Well, that's a great question. Um, it's going to be very hard to determine uh, a false positive. So I take the test again, and this time my results come back marked from the lab indeterminate. I'm faced with the decision, do I want to wait six weeks to test again or do it right away? I opted for right away. My results that time come back positive. Took it again, came back negative. I took it again, positive. If 
we were talking about reality, the reality is that AIDS is over. Somebody decided in the early 80s that there's this infection called HIV. And upon deciding that, I don't think it was debated enough. In 19... If you test positive, you are considered confirmed infected with HIV. But at the bottom of the page, in fine print, it states a person should have additional testing. It does not allow you to tell a single person on this planet that they are HIV positive. And it's a scandal that this test continues to be used. So again, I'm asking, where's the test? Where's the test that can confirm a diagnosis of HIV infection? And I can't find one. Do the answers to these questions help aid in the diagnosis? Of course, of course they did. Really? They do. Now, if I tell you that the test you took was lousy and didn't mean a thing, does that make any difference for everybody to hear? It make a difference for me. Yeah, I know. How can we say that HIV is the cause of AIDS when we don't know, based on current tests, whether or not anybody diagnosed positive actually has HIV. In April of 2008, Congress approved a $50 billion expenditure for AIDS treatment and prevention. The vast majority of the uh, world's population is not at any measurable risk of HIV infection. No measurable risk. Growing up in the age of AIDS, I was taught there were three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and contracting HIV from unprotected sex. If you don't use a condom, there's a lot of chances that you can actually get the killer disease that is AIDS. I did a study of the heterosexual transmission of HIV in California, and we recruited individuals who were infected with HIV. Then we recruited their sexual partners, and we looked at whether transmission, in fact, had occurred. Pabian runs a study. It's a 10-year study with the world's most virulent, terrifying sexually tra I mean, this thing jumps, excuse me, off of penises into vaginas miles away. How many of them do you think, after 10 years, with the world's most terrifying, virulent, sexually transmitted disease came up positive? Not nobody. Nobody. Nobody who was negative came up positive. The National Zero. Institutes of Health, and even the media, especially in this country, I charge the media with part of the responsibility, and a very significant one, in a current holocaust that can end up being worse than the one that occurred during World War II. When it was first announced that Dr. Robert Gallo had found the virus that probably caused AIDS, and that announcement was made with Margaret Heckler in 1984, to the press and to the media without one single scientific document appearing in any journal in the United States. And as we know now, without any proof whatsoever that the virus caused any disease. The media picked up on it for the sake of a story. And soon the virus that probably caused AIDS was now the virus that caused AIDS. It was proven in the press and nowhere else. Now, it's interesting, a lot of questions are asked of me whenever I appear before the cameras and do what some people have called a stunt, to sell books. I'm from the planet Earth. I honestly, honestly believe that these individuals are from the planet Uranus. <laughs> How anyone could suggest that I would stick myself with a virus that is supposedly deadly 
for the purpose of selling a book, that's complete insanity. And I will put the lie to the individuals of the NIH, particularly Gallo and Fauci and Hazeltine and Essex and the rest of these scoundrels of the worst order. Criminals guilty of genocide, without a doubt. I invite them to take me to court. I wish Burroughs Welcome would take me to court because they have been putting out a killer drug knowingly. Because in a court of law, I would have the opportunity to, pro to provide the absolute proof and evidence, as I have in my book, Deadly Deception. Now, I'm not alone in what I'm doing here today. How does the press escape such obvious truths? Why would the finest virologist in the world, the most noted virologist, member of our National Academy of Sciences, Peter Duesberg, why would he put his entire career on the line? What did he have to gain? He's already lost his laboratory and his funding. They can't take away his professorship because he's tenured. Why would a Charles A. Thomas, professor emeritus of Harvard, say the same thing? Why would Carrie Mullis, who won the Nobel Prize in virology last year, why would he stick his neck out? What did he have to gain? These are the questions reporters should be asking. And in order to sell a book, I would inoculate myself with a virus that supposedly is deadly. Ever think that maybe we all know something that you just don't get? That if you take the virus out of the equation, you have a perfectly understandable disease with a perfectly understandable answer. And I might remind you, in case you are not aware of it, and if you haven't read my book, that we have known what causes acquired immune deficiency diseases for at least 70 years. It's in the medical textbooks. It's there for you to read. Number one cause on the face of this earth is malnutrition and starvation. That's Africa. Look to the headlines of the October 3rd issue of the London Times, Sunday Times last year. And inside headlines that screamed across two pages, the plague that never was. Speak to Philip and Evelyn Krynan, who head partage with an organization of 250 people, their own hospital, their own doctors, their own laboratories, who have lived in the heart of the epidemic, supposedly, or the supposed epidemic, for five years. There is no epidemic. It doesn't exist. They are there. They're not some character who goes through from the World Health Organization and says, oh, I've seen the people dying. Of course you have. We all saw them on television in Somalia. What do you think you were looking at? That was AIDS due to starvation, due to malnutrition. It's no big secret what's causing AIDS. We've known it for 70 years. Number two is drugs. And don't just think of street drugs. Because the number one cause of AIDS today is actually two medical drugs, AZT, a drug that was discovered in the 60s as a chemotherapeutic drug for cancer and was shelved because it was too toxic to treat cancer, a drug worse than cancer. It's being too used to treat people who are immunosuppressed. Now let's go back to the other causes of AIDS. So it's not only street drugs, but medical drugs, but now three is radiation. What do they worry about at Chernobyl and Nagasaki and Hiroshima? But number four is chemotherapy. Number four. The number four cause of death of acquired immune deficiency diseases, chemotherapy. And the most toxic chemotherapeutic drug of all times, AZT, is what they're now using. 
to treat AIDS. And the Concord study completed last year. Now, can you imagine saying to the world, where was the press? Where are you people? Here, they're giving a drug that costs thousands of dollars a year, and it doesn't do any good? That's if you want to believe that. But did anybody here bother to look at the insert, the paper that comes with the drug? It's a DNA terminator. It means it is a terminator, just like the movie. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect, pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia, pan, all, cyto, cells, penia, loss of, loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS, and nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a large dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes. And so the next person, you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say, strychnine's a wonderful drug. This person lasts five times longer. This is the kind of thing that they present to the world. Now, I have offered for over a year now, and I continue to offer it, $100,000 to anyone who will give me one scientific document that proves that HIV causes any serious disease. It doesn't. It is a scandal and a scam beyond belief. The virologists who are responsible for this, what do they have to gain? Now, I don't know what Dewsbury had to gain, or Charles A. Thomas, or Carrie Mullis. He already got his Nobel Prize. Why does he come out and say it? And he's the one that found the test, the uh, PCR reaction. And he said that there is no body of evidence that supports that the virus causes any disease whatsoever. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. What do we have to say about the National Institutes of Health when a private laboratory, independent laboratory, found AZT to be 1,000 times more toxic than the laboratory of the NIH? We can understand a 5% error in a laboratory, even a 10% error. But a 10,000% error or 100,000% error? That's fraud. And as I understand it, the word has gone out, and there's even documents and letters to prove it, that the CDC, the same organization that let blacks go untreated with syphilis, well documented, just to see what would happen with the disease. This same organization who had to admit that they can't give, on an, give in on the AIDS thing now because nobody would ever be able to trust the government. I think the last election tells us what the people think about government. But science is acting no differently than politicians do. And now we have disease by politics. Isn't it strange that the same day or the day after Robert Gallo filed for a test for HIV after it was announced? This sounds like premeditation. You mean he just happened to have this test available?